All right, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my very first ever exploration of the Genesis Mini Console. I have hooked it up now to my setup over here, my, my AV setup as I use to capture and stream. Um, a few things that I want to talk, I was talking with the stream while I was doing this, but for those who are watching on YouTube, you want to know what we were doing. Um, FYI, the cords for this console are very short. The power cord's only about three, three feet long, and the game pad cord is only about three feet long. I just have enough room in my office to run this Genesis Mini from the power strip to the console, which has to sit on the floor, and then from the console to my love seat where I sit, like, I couldn't actually get it to fit if I put it over on my entertainment system. The cords wouldn't be long enough. So it has to sit on the floor while I'm playing it because they skimped on the length of the cords. So if you are going to get this console, you may want to be a little bit on the careful side. If you have an AV center where you have a lot of space between you and your TV, you're probably going to need some USB extension cables, okay? They're everything standard USB, but you're going to need those because it's not very long at all, all right? <clears throat> all right, so we're going to turn this sucker on. We're going to see what happens when I turn it on. All right, so let me actually get my TV on first. All right. Let me get my headphones hooked up. They're hooked up now, okay. And... I think that's it, so let me put my headphones on, and then we're going to turn it on and see what happens, okay? Let me get my headphones on here. Here we go. Hopefully, I have more luck with this than I have with my Nintendo Switch. Knock on wood. All right, here we go. <laughs> Wish me luck. Flipping the Switch. Oh, wait, I didn't hook it up. It would probably help if I hooked up the HDMI cable, wouldn't it? Boy, I'm stupid. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Okay. <laughs> Let's try this again. Hold on. My headphones unplugged. Okay, let's try this again. In three, two, one. Blast processing, go! Alright, here we go. Okay. I, for, I, I wonder what output this is doing, because it's not showing on my stream. So hold on a second here. It's showing, it's showing on my TV, but not on my stream. So I'm wondering what video quality it's outputting. Hold on a second here. It's got to be doing a different video quality than, than what I'm broadcasting at. Let's try something here. Maybe it's doing 720. No. What the hell is it doing? Uh. This is weird. It's definitely, it's hooked up to, it. see the thing is it's got to be working. Because I could see it on my TV. But it's not working with my capture setup. So it's working with my TV. That obviously means it's working. But why can't we see it on the stream? Some people saying copy protected. Is it? If it is, that's fine. I could bypass it. I could completely bypass the copy protection. I have the ability to do that. That's not a big deal. People are saying, does it have HDCP? Has it been confirmed it has HDCP? If it does, I could bypass it. But I want to be sure that's the case before I, I hook up my other thing here. Yeah, look, it's giving me nothing. Yes, it has HDCP. Okay. All right. Fair enough. This is why we do it like this. I could change. I could get past that. I have a bypass for that. So hold on. Good thing that we that we're ready for this. Okay. Let's let's uh do this on the fly. 
<laughs> okay. So, I need to do the same setup as I do with my PS3 then. Everything's hooked up. Go in here. And here. Like this. The audio won't affect anything. Let's see here. Definitely plugged in. Hmm. Turn it off and on again. Same as an input. Uh, huh. Not good. Why is it not working? This is not good. Guess what? It doesn't seem to be working with my HD, uh, my HDCP pass through. Even though my PS3 works with it fine, it's you can see the video feed is coming out of the Genesis Mini. It's going into the HDCP pass through device, um, but it doesn't give output. Like it says, there's definitely input, but for whatever reason, it's not converting that into an output signal and putting it into my capture here. Why? I have no idea. Because this works with my PS3. <clears throat> so, what I can do... Is I can... Well, I, let's test it with the PS3 just to make sure it works. Alright. So, let's make sure that this is working. Um, Hold on a second. What's that? Still nothing here. No. Okay. What I want to do, I want to make sure it's not my that my setup didn't break or whatever. I want to make sure that it's the actual console and not the setup. All right. So, hold on a second here. <laughs> Let's see here. So we hook up the PS3. Hmm. What is going on?
This just worked. I just played Sly. Hmm. Okay, well, guess what? It doesn't seem to be working with the PS3 either. That makes me think that something's going on with my HDCP bypass and not the Genesis Mini. So I guess I gotta mess with everything. I gotta unplug and replug everything in. So give me a second here to do that. This is what you do live on the fly shit, huh? Okay. So, yeah, look at this. It's going crazy. So there's the cord. The cord's coming over here. The cord goes here and plugs directly in here as HDMI input. Yes. Then we've got the power. We have the 5 1 channel surround. That's fine. Coming out of this thing, we've got this and that. Look at this. It's going nuts. Why is it doing that? working because it was just working when I hooked it up. <clears throat> this is not good. Let me try rebooting this. No, it's still blinking. I'm gonna have to order a new one of those because it's supposed to be fucked up. Unplug and replug everything. Still going crazy. Turn off. What the fuck is going on? Now it's not even working. Okay, this is weird. All right. So you guys know what's going on here. <laughs> so you guys know what's going on here. 
Um, so I just tried to hook up my PS3 to the HD to the HDCP bypass device, and it still didn't work. I'm like, what? I just played Sly Cooper last month. So playing Sly Cooper last month, I know it works because I just used it. So I was like, okay, I tried everything, nothing's working. So I said, let me just hook the PS3 straight up to my TV and see if it works. And even that's not working. What the fuck is going on here? I have no idea. So give me a second. I'm still experimenting over here. I have no idea what's going on right now. I'm very confused. So, more experimentation. I'm, I'm still here. Hold on. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, why? Yeah, I can't imagine why this isn't working. I just unplug this here, and I plug it directly into here. Yeah, that's direct. Whoa, okay. That's working. p output okay okay now CP. A cable was loose. <laughs> A cable was loose. There is no HDCP. You don't need a HDCP bypass. A cable was loose. Ugh. <laughs> Okay, crisis averted at least, for the love of God. And we have audio too, good. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I was like, you gotta be kidding me, like the whole thing's broken or something? Are you like <laughs> All right, hold on, let me turn off my PS3 before I forget, I don't want to leave that on. Oh my God. <sighs> All right, so let's actually, we have some shout outs here. Hold on a second. <laughs> let's do these shout outs. What a great start. Um, Ben Boxer cheered. He says, what was your favorite job ever? Why is it this Subway sandwich? I never worked at Subway. This is my favorite job ever, by the way. Dick Johnson took me a dollar 69 cents. I had a major surgery on a kidney a couple days ago. Recovering now. Thank you for streaming. You're welcome. Hand Celebratory did a 50-bit cheer. He said, do you think a fight stick that has USB will work on this? No. It's probably only going to be the, the this pad. That's it. I'm sure they only put drivers in for a Genesis pad that comes with it. I doubt any other controllers are going to work on this thing. Maybe I'm wrong, but I doubt it. 
Ponage101 did a $3 tip. He says, if Sega were to make a comeback and create a console that would compete against Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, do you think that they would do well? I have no idea. Um, that would be a, a tall order. <clears throat> that would be a lot of money investment for them out of nowhere when they've just been a game developer for many, many, many years now. So I don't necessarily think that they're going to ever do anything like that, just saying. But I don't know. I honestly don't know if they could hang. They would have to do a lot of impressive stuff to get people to get confidence in them as a console manufacturer again, that's for sure. Okay, uh, Jessica Tim. bit Cheers, I hope it works eventually. What game will you try out first? We'll see. We're going to do a walkthrough right now. We're going to see what's on here and, and figure it out. Thank you for the cheer. Philip Smelly Chair gives it a sub to Philip Smelly Hair. Excellent. Hank Duma tipped me $5. He says, in the worst situation, you could always go back to old school recording your television with the camera like in the good old days. Thank God I don't have to do that because I don't even have a camera to do that anymore. My cameras are old and the batteries don't work. The memory cards are shot. I wouldn't be able to do that. So, thank God it was just, a, it was literally a loose cable. I was like, oh my God. Fat Mr. Bo tipped a dollar. says, if you don't get it working, why not try to switch retro games? I would have, but we got it working. No worries. And my minute sex cheer, that the blast processing is so intense it messed with the connection. Maybe that's what it is. When the, the moment I plugged the Genesis Mini in, the blast processing power just jarred all the connection. It shock, shot through the wires and it went boop and unplugged. That could be. <clears throat> um, Wagrain cheers says, do you think it would be good for activity during dull moments? You ask your audience for questions and opinions. Sure. Okay. Uh, so let's update the leaderboard. Note, no one unseated anyone. But we got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about ten dollars in additional tips. Good lord. Okay. Almost had a disaster, but crisis averted. Very nice. Okay. Thank you guys for the support so far today. Okay, we have headphones on, so I can actually hear stuff. All right. I got sound. Hear that beep? It's a weird sounding beep. I don't know how I feel about that. Okay, we're gonna go with Inglaze. A to confirm. Inglaze. Oh. Oh. We got some retro tunes playing. As soon as you boot the sucker up, dude, this is cool. So it actually says sort by release date. Now this is neat because what we're gonna get to see as we go walk through this uh, dashboard of the Genesis Mini console is what games came out first in order. Dude, this is cool. I love this retro vibes. Oh, uh, great retro music, dude. Uh, Philip Smelly Sharon, I'll give this up to Philip Smelly Underwear. I see a pattern emerging here. Thanks for the gift itself. All right, so what games are on the Genesis Mini? People have been asking me this. I'm going to tell you. Let me lower this music a little bit. It's kind of jarring and loud. Hold on a second here. So, here's what we've got on the Genesis Mini. The earliest game out of all of them is Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle. I, if I remember correctly, what you're looking at here is kind of the launch, the launch lineup for the Sega Genesis. You notice how they all have a similar look? The top, like, four to five games here all have a very similar look to the box and the logo. That's because those were launch titles. So, Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle, Altered Beast, Space Harrier 2... Ghouls and Ghosts, Golden Axe, and Columns. Now, what's kind of neat, at the bottom of the right screen, it's telling you what kind of a game it, it, it is. So, a single-player, what looks to be like an action platformer, one- to two-player action platformer, single-player shooter. See, there's like a spaceship, so that must be a shooter. Ghouls and Ghosts, a single-player, or one- to two-player action platformer. Golden Axe, one- to two-player kind of action platformer. And Columns, one- to two-player puzzle game. I like that, that it categorizes the games, and I also like that it has the original box art. That's pretty neat. Oh, let's actually, let's check out settings before we do anything. Read this before playing. View manuals with your smartphone or tablet by scanning this box. Look at that. Language reset screen settings. Oh. So you could do original aspect ratio or messed up ugly stretched. I think we're going to do original aspect ratio. Wallpaper settings. So we can either do, oh my god, that, or that, or nothing. I kind of like that. This is ugly, right? That's kind of, oh, I don't like that background. I like this one. So we'll go with that background. Snap credits and legal notices. Okay. So for what I'm going to understand, I'm going to try something. Watch this. Look what just happened. 
So you see what just happened? When you change the language, it changes all the games and the menu to what's native to your region. So in Japan, Space Harrier 2 actually came out before Altered Beast and Alex Kidd. So that game's listed first, and it actually shows the Japanese box art for all the games. Of course, the downside of this is all these games will be in Japanese. You can't read a fucking thing inside the game, right? So actually it has all of the Japanese versions of the games inside with all the Japanese art, which is pretty effing neat. Look at that. I never even saw this artwork for Sonic. I never saw that, uh, that Japanese artwork for it. I had no idea what it looked like. That's pretty damn cool. The Rockman, instead of Mega Man, Rockman Mega World, it's called. I had no idea that's what it was called. Rockman Mega World. Vampire Killer. <laughs> it's not Castlevania, it's Vampire Killer. Dude, that's awesome. Light Crusader? I don't even know what game that is. Comics don't see. Some of these are the same. All right, let's change it back. This was English, I think. Yeah. People want to say said I should do like uh French. So now it goes back to Genesis. So it's the same now, yeah, but it's in French. Parameters. All right, back to English. So that's pretty cool. You can see the various arts and everything. I like that. That's a, that's a cool retro touch if you want to see the original Japanese versus the American or, you know, whatever. I like that that's in there. Uh, shout out to Yoshino Lover who did a 50-bit series. The music is catchy. I agree. This is very nice retro music. All right, so what do we get? Alex Kidd, action platformer. Never played it. Altered Beast. Definitely played this. In in interesting tidbit. I played Altered Beast first on the PC. Then later I played it on consoles because I actually my dad had a PC during the 80s and 90s and for some reason it came with Altered Beast but it ran like shit so we actually had it but it would run in like slow-mo and choppy as hell it was pretty much unplayable um but we used cheat codes and we beat it which is pretty funny Space Harrier 2 this is the shooter game where you're going straight forward and things are coming at you and you have to move around and shoot forward it mostly was an arcade game but it had some console success Ghouls and Ghosts, which I believe isn't Ghouls and Ghosts the, the sequel to Ghosts and Goblins because Ghosts and Goblins was the original and that was an arcade game that was ported to NES very, very challenging platformer game where you're a knight throwing lances and axes and things at uh, monsters and ghosts to survive, and by the way Arthur then went on to be in Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Golden Axe so very popular side-scrolling beat-em-up game from the 1980s and 90s. I think it was I think it was late 80s, but it could have been early 90s. Um, where you're it's fantasy, you know. Other beat-em-up games at the time were very realistic. This one was fantasy-based, where you could be like a dwarf, a warrior, a, 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 a Amazon, you know, different characters like that, which was pretty neat. Columns I've never played. It's supposed to be, you know, Tetris was kind of like the quintessential puzzle game for Nintendo. So Columns, they wanted to have a game that was kind of like that for Genesis and Mega Drive, so that's what the columns is. I've never played it, so I'll have to see when I, when I test it out what it's like. Thunder Force 3, that's a shooter. Never played the Thunder Force series, but very popular back in the day. Uh, Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse, a very popular and very successful platforming franchise. One of the few early tie-ins with Disney. This was one of the games that it was so successful that Disney realized that they wanted to do future games. And they started making other games based on their movie releases. So, pretty cool. Strider, I think everyone knows Strider. Uh, 2D platformer, action-based. Um, hilarious, though, because look at what Strider looks like. Right? He looks like a friggin' some dude. <laughs> some dude with a sword. It's like, that's not who Strider's supposed to be, a, a cyber ninja. But on the cover to the armor, he's a dude with a sword. Sonic the Hedgehog 1, pretty straightforward, so... When the Genesis was first released, Altered Beast was the game that came with it for free. Because back then, oh my god, you used to actually get games packaged in with your new consoles. Can you believe that shit? You actually got a game when you bought a console? Well, back then it was Altered Beast, but then I believe it was in a, within a year, Sonic the Hedgehog released. And then Sonic just became the face of the Sega Genesis. So that's why he took over and he that became the game that was packaged in with the Genesis after a while. Jam and Earl. So this is uh, another kind of action platformer a little different if you saw earlier this year they actually had a new toe jam and earl game that i played it's a very weird game but it caught on because it was very different from other games um wonder boy and monster world this is interesting i played wonder boy in arcades in the 1980s i used to go to a corner store 
with my dad and we pick up the local newspaper every weekend plus we get like milk and stuff at the corner store and they had Wonder Boy on an arcade machine and I played it and then later on they ported it to consoles and this is I believe one of those ports Alicia Dragoon I don't know a damn thing about this game I've never heard of it and never played it so I don't know anything about that one I guess we're gonna check that one out um Kid Chameleon. This is another action platformer, very popular back in the day, but I never played it, so I don't know anything about it either. Super Fantasy Zone. No clue what that is. Super Fantasy Zone, it says that it's a shooter, I guess? So, I don't know what to watch, what, but, uh, okay. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, obviously the, the sequel to Sonic the Hedgehog 1, very, very superior to Sonic the Hedgehog 1. Many more fast-moving abilities than the first game. The ability to have co-op with, with another player to join you or to play as Tails and fly around added a lot to the, to the game. So that's actually my favorite Sonic game of all time is Sonic 2. Ego the Dolphin. So interesting story about this one. I never played it. I never owned it. I never rented it. But I had a dentist that I went to at the time. Okay? And the dentist had a Sega Genesis kiosk in his office so that when kids were waiting for their appointments, they could play the Genesis. And it only had Eco the Dolphin and Sonic in it. So you had to play one or the other. And I played Eco the Dolphin. It's a very challenging game where you have to, like, master these, like, momentum mechanics of the dolphin diving and jumping to jump over objects and dodge enemies and stuff. It seemed really hard. And I never played it any more than just a few minutes waiting for my doctor's appointment. So I don't know, you know, how hard it really is. I guess we're going to find out for ourselves when I actually play it in this collection. Road Rash 2. So, motorcycle racing game, but the interestingly enough, one of the first racing games to implement actual violence. Other racing games up to this time had been more based off of, say, simulation of driving. This game, you actually take, like, chains and bats, and you're beating people and everything next to you. So this is the one that they ported to the Genesis, Road Rash 2. It would been a very popular arcade game, and they ported it to the Genesis or Mega Drive. Uh, a couple shout-outs here. Philip Smelly Chair. Gives it a, now is gifting subs to Philip Smelly Foreskin and Philip Smelly Sauce. Great. Sega donated our tip two dollars and says all the menu music is is new. It's composed by Yuzo Koshiro, legendary composer who did Streets of Rage, Shinobi, and Et Etrian Odyssey, etc. Cool. I did not know that. Very nice. All right. Let's uh update the tips total. Continue on, because people wanted to know what games are in it. Let's continue. Streets of Rage 2. Now, this is interesting to me. And the reason this is interesting to me is because they didn't put Streets of Rage 1, they put 2. In my opinion, Streets of Rage 2 is the better one. There's more characters. And this is the one where there's, like, special moves and stuff in the game. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up game similar to Final Fight, but Sega wanted their own franchise of it. Rather than getting the rights to Final Fight, they wanted their own beat-em-up franchise, so they actually had a game company develop one for them called Streets of Rage 1, but admittedly, Streets of Rage 1 was kind of difficult and also didn't have a lot of character selection. So Streets of Rage 2 has four different characters you can play as, and it is full co-op, which is kind of fun. Uh, so this is the sequel to Castle of Illusion up here called World of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. This one actually was, was uh, two players, while the first one was only one player, and this one added Donald as a second character. So the first game did so well, they made a sequel. Pretty cool. Shining Force. I believe this is an RPG. Now, I never played the original Shining Force. Years and years later, I played, I think it was like Shining Force 3 or 4. I played on the Sega Saturn, and I actually really liked it. But I never played the original Shining Force, so it'll be interesting to see what the hell this is. Gunstar Heroes is an interesting hybrid game. It's got shooting, but also it's got action and platforming to it. So, kind of neat. It's up to two players. Shinobi 3 which I believe is an action platformer. Return of the Ninja Master. So, the Nintendo consoles kind of had the Ninja Gaiden series, while the Sega consoles had Shinobi. So, Ninja action platforming game. I never played any of the Shinobi games, so we'll see what that's like. All right. I got to talk about this one for a bit, okay? So, during the 1990s, there was obviously a giant explosion of popularity with fighting games. It all started with Street Fighter 2, where people were lining up in arcades to play the game in a competitive way. It was the first actual, like, competitive, head-to-head -head style arcade game that got any kind of notoriety. And then there was a big rush to get the games on console. Well, 
we were told the Genesis could not handle Street Fighter 2, so it was actually the Super NES that got the exclusivity and got Street Fighter 2 on SNES as a, as a, like a release within, I think it was within a year of the, of the actual arcade release, it came out for the SNES. Now, admittedly, it wasn't arcade perfect, but it was a pretty good representation of what the games were, all right? Um, then, about a year later, so I believe this would be like 1992, you had Street Fighter II Special Championship, Special Championship Edition for the Genesis, while on the Super Nintendo they had Street Fighter II Hyper Fighting. At the, the, this is very confusing, all right? Here's how it worked. There were five versions of Street Fighter II in the arcades. The original, Champion Edition, Hyper Fighting, Super Street Fighter II, and Super Street Fighter II Turbo, okay? So when you hear that you say Special Championship Edition, this, that's the second one, right? It was, there was original, then there was Championship Edition. No. <laughs> okay? This game is actually Hyper Fighting. It's actually Street Fighter II Hyper Fighting. But when they branded it for the Genesis, they wanted to call it something different because they wanted to push it like, oh, it's a different from the Super NES version. You want this version. So in this version of the game, essentially it plays like Hyper Fighting and it runs at the same speed, but there's like settings in the game where you can change the game speed. You could change the colors of the characters. It's very weird. Like they named it one thing, but it really was a different game because they wanted to brand it differently for the Genesis. The thing is this game, is very inferior to the SNES versions of both Street Fighter 2 and Hyper Fighting. The graphics, the sound, and essentially the controls, and here's why. The Genesis Pad only has three buttons. So to play this game on the Genesis Pad, this is a six button game. There's three punches and three kicks, okay? It starts off as punches. If you wanna do a kick, you have to press the start button, and then it would switch between punches and kicks. So if you're doing a combo and you want to do jump in with a kick, then a standing punch, and then a special move with a kick, you have to press one button, start, then the button, then start again, and then the other button. It's insanely complicated. In addition to that, you can't pause the game. That's right, you cannot pause this game because start switches between the button setup. There's no way to pause it. So it's really bad. Now, in order to play this game for real, you had to buy a six button controller, and eventually I got a six button controller, for the Genesis, and I played this, it's okay, but it's nowhere near as good as the SNES version. So it's nice that the Genesis got a version of Street Fighter 2, but it's far inferior to the version for the SNES. There you go. Uh, Landstalker. I don't know anything about it. It says it's an RPG, but I've never heard of it. By the way, you may have noticed something. Did you notice the box art has changed? It's because of the different waves of games that came out for Genesis. So this top line was basically the first wave of games. Then they changed the Genesis logo to no longer have that black outline anymore. And then you see wave two. And wave two really read the Sonic craze. All right, wave three, they changed the box again. Now it didn't have that Genesis logo at all anymore. Now it was this red logo around the edge of the box and Genesis kind of going up so that's that's basically generation three of genesis games As you can see it's all different here um oh my god sonic spinball so i really like sonic spinball um a lot of people don't but what it is it's a pinball game with sonic as the pinball and it has like a combination of sonic gameplay with pinball gameplay um it's challenging and i played the shit out of it and i mastered the game and I actually really like playing through it because I like pinball games, but I also like Sonic. So this is a game that not a lot of people actually really played, but I really like this game. So it'll be interesting if I can remember any of it. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine is not actually what it's called. Much like how in, in with the original Super Mario games, Super Mario Bros. 2 doesn't exist in Japan. It's actually called Doki Doki Panic, and they just put a skin over it and called it Super Mario Bros. 2 in the United States and Europe. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine is actually called Poyo Poyo, but then they did a skin over it and put Dr. Robotnik in it and said, oh, this is a, 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 a Sonic game. No, it's not, but they wanted to sell it more, so they put Robotnik in it and changed the game. So there you go, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, a puzzle game. Oh, let's see, I got a few shout outs to do. Philip Smelly Chair cheers to play something. I will be playing something after I do the walkthrough. Zaher King also took me $5. Let's start from the top, I missed the beginning. Okay, so this first line of games here is the... No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. Okay, um, 
An anonymous dollar tipper says, play something no one cares about the backgrounds of the games. Actually, people do. It's my stream. Tough titties. Young Remy, subscribe to the channel for 14 months. Thank you, Young Remy, for the support and the resub. Iwojo just resub for 31 months. Thank you very much for that very long-standing support. And he says, I remember playing a game called Chakan the Forever Man, which is basically Dark Souls for the Genesis. It was that hard. You know, a lot of games back then were that hard. Reason being, as I've talked about in the past, um, they basically didn't have a lot of storage space on, on cartridges back then. Everything was on a cartridge. So because they didn't have a lot of storage space, they had to make the games crazy difficult. And they also didn't have game saves and they didn't have checkpoints so that you would have to replay the game from the start if you died. And they did that on purpose to give longevity to their games. So kind of different because now everyone complains about it when they don't have that stuff. But back then, that was a common occurrence. Um, Binary Ruse, subscribe to the channel. Thank you, Binary Ruse, for the sub. Okay, let's continue. Eternal Champions. So... Again, Sega striving to try to get things exclusive for their console so people would buy their console. They wanted a fighting game series exclusive to this to the Genesis. Eternal Champions is that. Um, it's not great. What it is, it's a game where through time there's like heroes through time who are fighting each other. So you got a guy from the future who shoots lasers. You got a caveman with a club. What's actually funny about this, there was a game at the same time in arcades called Time Killers that was exactly the same premise, but Time Killers was very adult-oriented and had a lot of gore where you could, like, behead your enemies and stuff because they wanted to be like Mortal Kombat. Well, this, although this has gore in it, it doesn't have fatalities and shit like that. So it's interesting. I played it, and I didn't really love it, but I thought it was all right. I guess we'll check that out at some point. Um, Castlevania Bloodlines. This was huge for Sega, because at the time, Castlevania had always been a franchise exclusive to Nintendo. And when they finally got a Castlevania game for the Genesis, this was like a coup for them. Like, yes, we finally got the very popular series on our console. Um, the thing was, it was pretty interesting and unique because it was a combination of different Castlevania elements. So, I'll be excited to check this one out. Contra Hardcore... I don't really remember it. Like, I remember playing Super Contra on the SNES, but I don't think I ever played Contra Hardcore. So, I guess we'll see when we play. I'm sure it's difficult. Contra games are always crazy hard. Um, Earthworm Jim. So, Earthworm Jim was pretty unique because it had very, very, uh, very detailed visuals. Like, the graphics of the game for 2D artwork are very well drawn, like, hand drawn. And the animations were very really elaborate for the time. And it was also a pretty funny game with, like, almost, like, kind of really silly humor in it that other games didn't have. Other games were more serious. This game has a lot of humor in it. Um, so I liked it. Well, Earthworm Jim 1 is very difficult. Earthworm Jim 1 is a very challenging game, and it's very tough to actually beat it. Um, so I'd be very interested to see if I could play this and beat it. I don't know if I'd be able to. Earthworm Jim 2, I beat because it was a lot easier, but Earthworm Jim 1 is, like, super fucking hard, dude. Okay. Dynamite Heady. Now, this is an interesting. This is a game that is a platforming game where you use your head as the weapon. Your head comes off your body and attacks enemies. I didn't play it, but I always saw it in gaming magazines. Um, Mega Man The Wily Wars, from what I'm to understand, this game is, the first of all, the very first Mega Man game to ever appear on a Sega console. And I think it's supposed to be like a mashup compilation where they took various robot masters and stages from different Mega Man games and put it into a mashup game. So I think it's weird because it's got like characters from Mega Man, different Mega Man games that are together in the same game, which doesn't make sense um, if you had played this on the NES uh, at least. So this will be interesting to try because I wanted to play this. Plus, for what I'm to understand, I was told this earlier today, if you beat the main game, it unlocks original characters made exclusively for this one that are only in this version of the game, which is kind of neat. So, it's pretty nice. Um, Gunjack just did a 1200-bit cheer. Thank you very much. Biggest cheer of the day so far. He says, I missed out the unboxing. Looks like I got here right on time. Were there any Final Fantasies on the Genesis? Would you prefer Final Fantasy VI or a 4 remake? No. Final Fantasy had an exclusivity agreement with Nintendo to only appear on Nintendo consoles. And then when they jumped ship from Nintendo to the PlayStation 1 for Final Fantasy VII, that was huge news and a big coup for PlayStation because originally it was supposed to be on the CD-based console for Nintendo, but then Nintendo scrapped their ideas for that and went with the N64. And Squaresoft said, we can't fit this game on a, on a, on a cartridge, so we're going with Sony. And that's when they went to PlayStation. So... No, they never never was there a Final Fantasy on a Sega console. Thank you, Gunjack. You're the top cheerer of the day. Let's get you up there on the leaderboard. Twelve hundred 
your bitch. Thank you very much. And you used the subway cheer mode, which helps too, so thank you. Then someone sent me a dollar complaining that I didn't play a game yet. You're just gonna have to be patient. Sorry. Oh well. Um, Ted Kaczynski just sent me ten dollars saying the Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. They've been greatly increased life expectancy of those who are in advanced countries. They have destabilized society and a midlife un unfulfilling have, and then it cut off. Gee, thanks, Ted. Anyway, let's get Ted up as the top tipper of the day. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Thank you guys so much. Super supportive stream so far today. Thank you. And Noko for Days has subscribed for 28 whopping months. Thank you for 28 months of support. Noko for Days. All right. Uh, Fantasy Star 4. Interestingly enough, I've never played a Fantasy Star game. Ever. So I don't know anything about the series except I know it's a turn... I think it's a turn-based RPG. But I've never played it. Might be one to check out. Beyond Oasis. Never played it. Don't know anything about it. I know it's an RPG, but I don't know anything about it. Light Crusader. I really didn't play any RPGs except for on the SNES, so I don't know anything about Genesis RPGs. It'd be pretty cool to check these out for the very first time. Comic Zone. This was a late Genesis game, meaning it was near the end of the Genesis's run as a console, okay? Now, Comic Zone is a game that is a side-scrolling beat-em-up, but it has interesting elements to it that make it unique, and it features comic book characters. Which is neat because back then, not a lot of games were comic book tied. Then they started doing like tying games like X-Men, Batman, etc. This is its own unique plot. Pretty neat. It's pretty challenging as well. Vector Man. This is another kind of side-scrolling platformer action game. Now this one featured a special kind of graphics that people really liked. And it pushed kind of the Genesis to its limits of what it could do. We'll see when we check that one out. Oh my god. Alright. Virtual Fighter 2. Uh, there are some games, sadly, ladies and gentlemen, that never should have come to certain consoles. Virtual Fighter, for those who don't know, was the first ever fighting game to use 3D rendered graphics, meaning polygons. Before then, everything was 2D. Virtual Fighter was the first series to use 3D. However, they still ported the game to consoles that could not handle 3D polygons. This is a case where they tried to do 3D polygons on the Genesis. This game looks like shit. <laughs> It's be it doesn't play like the real Virtua Fighter 2 at all. It looks and runs terrible. It's essentially a 2D version of a 3D fighter. Not a good idea. And uh, it's really bad. So it'll be funny to play this. I don't know why they put this on there, but that's pretty funny that it's on there. Uh, let's see here. Hornet Man just took me $5. So nice to see you playing some retro games. Yes, thank you very much, Hornet Man. I'll be checking them out shortly. All right. Crap. Uh, Bagel Goose did 100-bit cherries. Have you ever physically destroyed a game because it sucked? Like, physically destroyed a cartridge? I've thrown games before, but I don't think I've actually broken a cartridge by, by throwing it. So, no. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Monster World 4. I don't know anything about it. It says here it's an action platformer. Darius is a shooter. I know that for a fact. But I didn't know it was on the Genesis. From what I understand, this is something that was an arcade game that was ported just for the Genesis Mini. Same thing with Tetris. I'm pretty sure Tetris had not been on the Genesis. So this is an original port of arcade Tetris, I guess, right? So there you go. 42 different games. And I find it very fun that you can switch over and see the Genesis... Or, excuse me, the Japanese slash Mega Drive versions. I mean, look at some of this artwork. It's quite outstanding. Um, look at that. The, the columns looks completely different. Oh my god. That's Strider. So, look at Strider. That's Strider in Japanese. It's a ninja. In, a, in, in the English for American version, it's some white dude with a fucking sword. Here, it's an actual ninja again, which is kind of funny. They completely changed the shit for America. Uh, I don't know why that one's so small. That's Fantasy Zone. I'm trying to see what ones look totally different. I don't even know what game this is. I can't even tell what game this is. Look at that art. Chameleon, so he's called Chameleon Kid in Japan, not Kid Chameleon. Oh, uh, let's see. I don't know what the hell game that is. Oh my god. Streets of Rage is called Bare Knuckle in Japan. I didn't know that. Bare Knuckle 2. Okay. Shinobi 3 was called Super Shinobi 2 in Japan. Okay, I didn't know that. Wow, so it wasn't called Street Fighter 2 Special Championship Edition. It was called Street Fighter 2 Plus Champion Edition in Japan. 
That's interesting. Sonic Spinball has completely different artwork. So this is not Fantasy Star 4 in Japan. It's just like Fantasy Star with a name attached to it. Huh. Uh, so we already saw Castlevania is called Vampire Killer. Rockman Mega World. That's cool. What the fuck? The story of Thor? What is that? The story of Thor. I have no idea. Uh, Virtual Fighter 2. Darius Tedget. Okay, the rest of the same. That's, I like that. That's really cool to see that. Of course, I'm not going to play those versions. I won't be able to understand them. But I like that. All right. So I'm very curious to see what people will want me to play first. But that is my walkthrough of the Genesis Mini. I hope you enjoyed it.